live from the Quadrigian capital, this is the GBN Television News. GBN, covering you from the Grenadine Island chain to Brooklyn, New York, via the World Wide Web on www.gbn.gb. The news headlines comes to you compliments. Nexa Credit Union, with you wherever your road leads. When you need someone to help you to your feet, I'll be that beacon to your highest peak. Oh, I'll be right next to you, no, I will never leave. Come on, take my hands, we got everything we need. Cause you can look to me, yes, I can. whenever you're in need. Yes, you can. Just call on me and I'll be on my way. Nexa Credit Union, with you, wherever your road leads. The first segment of the news comes to you compliments. Soft Weave Bathroom Tissue. Have you heard about the new Soft Weave Bathroom Tissue with Total Hygiene? As hygiene and safety have taken center stage, a bathroom tissue is now manufactured with three different technologies to offer the best protection for you and your family. UVC light technology for a safe and effective disinfection process, eliminating 99.9% .9 of microorganisms. Also, production at high temperatures, killing all types of germs and bacteria. And it's pH controlled with delicate fibers to prevent irritation for even sensitive skin. Soft Weave Total Hygiene Bathroom Tissue. Available in supermarkets and shops island-wide. Visit Soft Weave Caribbean Facebook or Instagram pages for more information. This is Network News for Friday, February 17, 2023. In the headlines, APHIS authorizes imports of fresh mango fruit from Grenada into the United States. New National Party calls on government to reconsider the plan to sever MNIB workers. 17-year-old Brianna Primus crowned a Karuku Carnival Queen 2023. In around the globe, regionally, businesses partner to launch a joint venture in Jamaica. Internationally, Trudeau justified in using emergency powers. Plus, in the sports news, GFA executive member dismissed. Good evening, I'm Ken Rivetis, live at Television Center at the Grenada Broadcasting Network. We'll bring you the details right after this. The first segment of the news comes to you compliments. Soft Weave Bathroom Tissue. Thanks for joining us. Top story to report. The ban has been lifted and Grenada has been re-accepted to export fresh mangoes to the United States. Here's the report. Some good news for Grenada's agro-industry. The United States Department of Agriculture's Animal and Plant Health Inspection Service, APHIS, is authorizing the importation of fresh mango fruit from Grenada into the United States. According to the APHIS official website, the decision is effective immediately. Farmers Representative in the Senate, Roderick Sinclair, welcomed the news, saying Grenada had been previously banned about 20 years ago from exporting fresh fruit due to pest concerns. However, APHIS conducted a pest risk analysis, which determined that applying one or more cytosanitary measures will be enough to mitigate the risk of introducing or spreading plant pests on noxious weeds, allowing for the resumption of export from Grenada to the U.S. Since 1999, there about 2000, Grenada was banned from exporting mangoes to the U.S., particularly for the mango seed weevil and, of course, the fruit fly. These are very serious pests that the U.S. would have restricted our mango. We are speaking about all these mangoes living in Grenada in commercial quantities and would have to be irradiated, right, such that you're able to be safe.
great for, for human consumption. He expounded upon what this means for farmers in Grenada. The good news is that our farmers now can able to access those markets in commercial quantities. So someone with a mango, two mangoes in a suitcase would not be able to, to get those mangoes into the U.S. because where would they get it to be irradiated? They have to go to special centers. It means that the whole issue of traceability is my understanding also is important because they need to know which farms these mangoes come from. So the issue of having tighter management with predialacinate, which I'm always speaking about, is relevant because the traceability back to the farms. If someone still produce, how do you know which farm it come from? The farmer's representative said farmers and government will now have to revisit the planting and overall care, including pruning and fertilization and harvesting of mangoes in Grenada. This, he added, might require government's intervention in the form of some sort of bundle deal for farmers. It means also that if you look at our mango plantation for the last 10 years or more, and understandably so, with the lack of those markets, the fields have not really been maintained, the propagation of mango plants, the orchards have not been maintained to the way um, the pest management control out of the Ministry of Agriculture has been on the dung. It means, therefore, that we need to have all of those systems back in place for our farmers to get his benefits. So a farmer who has his mango field right now is saying, well, how do I get it pruned? How do I get it sprayed? How do I get the labor to put back into this? So it means that a special call to the government would have to look at maybe, I would say, some package to, to support this whole opportunity that re-exists for, for our mangoes. Cherry and Blackburn Stephen, GBN News. Well, the opposition New National Party is against government's decision to close down the cash-strapped Marketing and National Importing Board. Nisha Paul is following that story. It was under the new National Party regime that the Marketing and National Importing Board went belly up. Now that the National Democratic Congress has decided to shutter the operations, the opposition party is crying foul. Former Trade Minister Oliver Joseph addressed the issue on GBN's To The Point program. You have 94 employees there and you have farmers from all over Grenada supplying marketing board with their produce and therefore the effect of the closure not only on the staff, the suppliers and not only farmers because I know one individual that supplies confectionery to marketing board and on about three thousand dollars a month by supplying the different yes the different stuff. yes different stuff you see mm. inside in marketing board there okay okay um so a lot of people will be affected by this immediate decision um to close it down entirely prime minister deacon mitchell has given the assurance that severed workers who qualify will be given first preference when the new entity is created to replace the mnib the NNP chairman, Oliver Joseph, said the passage of Hurricane Ivan was among factors impacting the board. For the fruits and vegetables that we supply, like mango, for example, there is a shortage of supply, not a shortage of demand. The demand side is there. There is a demand for Grenada product on in the U.S. market. To the diaspora, mm. UK market, that's the two largest, and then you have Canada. And market and any amount of mangoes at the right quality could be sold at these markets. The NNP chairman said the passage of Hurricane Ivan was among factors impacting the board. The opposition party issued a press release expressing concern about the various MNIB stakeholders. He made a case for alternative action. What had to happen is you must have planned production. You see, you cannot... You must have the market first, so as I say, the market is there. So, how do you get the supply? Well, you have private farmers, not government, 
farms you have producing these you know, private farmers. Well, the vast majority of, of, of farmers in Grenada are farms in Grenada are privately Right, owned. privately owned, right. So the questions come now. How could the Ministry of Agriculture work with these farmers to plan production? The new National Party first initiated an investigation into the operations of the National Importing Board in 2018. No known action was taken up to four years later when the party was ousted by the National Democratic Congress in June 2022. The new Deacon Mitchell regime says it will be suicidal to let the board continue racking up millions of dollars in debt, and as such, it has no choice but to shut down its operations. It has announced plans to start a new organization through a public-private partnership. The MNIB Pack House at River Road will remain open to continue purchasing from farmers. For GBN News, I'm Nisha Paul. Question time. Are we citing a bigger challenge than originally anticipated? My colleague Christina John has an update on the Molinier Landslip Project. An additional cost and a change to the original design for the Molinier Landslip Project as new challenges surface. Project manager Abinash Dabadi is concerned that these new challenges could likely lead to setbacks. The greater challenges, uh, because what happened, uh, looking, if you look, on, look at the condition of the soil, okay, it is entirely gravel, and we need to deal with that, and every day, whenever it gets fall down, we need to replace it, or remove it, because that's the main thing, and unless and until we do that, we cannot start the structure backfilling. So we are not, uh, we are trying to go as, rid of, as early as possible to get rid of it, but it's still falling down. So that is a big major challenge uh, to counter it. So with the present scope, however, he told GBN they are on schedule. We're tracking on schedule, uh, we are on track. Uh, there are some challenges because of the inclement weather and uh, the land sleep and the people who are passing through. Uh, but we are trying to overcome it and we currently we are on track and we are just moving forward with the existing design and hopefully we'll be on time. Work has been completed 100%. After that, pile cap foundation has been done. So next activity is the structural backfilling, and currently we are proceeding with that. Uh, there was one challenge earlier. The Navasa water pipeline was required to shift. So you can see the progress has been done. Navasa has been completed the uh, shifting of the pipeline. A uh, new pipeline has gone under the, uh, under the road, and it is passing, through, uh, passing nearby the pile cap foundation. So currently there is no issue with the Navasa water pipeline. Uh, so we are moving forward and we are doing the bench excavation and we are preparing for the structural backfilling right now. Thomas Batista is the newly installed consultant for the project. Well, actually we want to, to do it uh, in about two weeks, two weeks time. But at the middle time, the contractor will keep working here. They're making a progress on the on the web because all the all the area that you see there, we have to clean it out. All that area we have to clean it out to build a, a new wall, a new retaining wall from the top, from the bottom to the top, whole structure, and that keeps the material confined between two walls, and then will be safe for everybody to work and machinery and everybody. With a new design now having to be done, it is hoped that it will get approval in the shortest possible time. Adrian Martel is the designer. He says due to the instability of the soil material at the top, they will have to overlook the first design. I'm here in order to, to uh, see the old design and we are looking for approval for the new one. Because of uh, we, they got here a lot of problem with the soil materials. They are uh, like a unstable. And we are planning to put a, a retaining wall, the new one, because of the uh, before design was with a three step, three a retaining wall. And we are thinking now in only two, but uh, big than the before. I think uh, with the new one, with the, uh, both uh, retaining wall, we will uh, retain the, the soils, the, the, the unstable soils. But we are going to the office, like I said, to the contract in order to check which uh, are the, the costs of the new project. Okay. Christina John, GBN News.
Other news, the Grenada Ports Authority is about to launch additional safety procedures on all ports in the state of Grenada as it aims to minimize the risk of injuries on their compounds. Rina Pet Thomas reports. First phase, we're going to be dealing with the regular users of the port, the brokers, the agents, etc. And what we have is a color-coded system where the different categories of workers and visitors will have different color vests to donate, designate who they are. And that way, at a distance, you will know who they are and where they, if they should be in a certain area. The second phase we will have is we will then be looking at similar safety vests for the users who are not regulars on the port. So persons that may come once in a while to clear a barrel, for instance, that will be the second phase of the program. And in the final phase, we're looking at parking on the compound that people are parking in areas that are safe. That was Ian Evans, port manager at the Grenada Port Authority, as he speaks about the port's new safety initiative that will be implemented in the month of March. The initiative is aimed at improving port operations and minimizing the risk of injuries at all ports in the state of Grenada. Stakeholders and regular visitors of the port will be required to fit themselves with the proper vest and other PPEs when on port compounds. Customers coming in to clear their barrels and other small cargo will be fitted with vests, complements the Port Authority with no cost for now. Franklin Herredhead, General Manager of the Grenada Port Authority, says the practice of lingering at the port has become an issue that also needs to be curbed. People wander through the, 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 the port environment. I mean, you may find someone show up for a particular purpose, but, you know, given the culture of Grenada, you know, people people drift. So I'm mean, trying to discourage drifting. Um, so you come for a specific purpose, you, you engage with the appropriate personnel, and then you leave the facility um, through, the, through the appropriate routes. Peter Gay Price Busley, safety officer at the Grenada Port Authority, gave statistics of the reported injury recorded so far. Since we commenced officially, um, we've been over 400 days without a last time accident. However, um, in terms of the injury rates, um, we it's inclusive of um, damages to both assets and the personnel. And um, as it relates to personnel, the statistics shows that it's mainly first aid cases. The implementation of the Port Authority's safety initiative will kick off on February 19th with a church service and will end on March 3rd with an official launch. For GBN News, I am Rena Pet Thomas reporting. This is Network News from the Grenadian capital. Still ahead from us, 17-year-old Brianna Primus crowned Caracol Carnival Queen in 2023. We'll talk about that. Stay with us. We're back. Grenada's Wester Hall White Jack Work Boat Regatta 2023. Saturday 25th and Sunday 26th February. Two days of hard racing and fun fetting on Grand Dance Beach. It's We Regatta with Wester Hall Rums. Sponsored by Wester Hall White Jack Rum. Grenada Tourism Authority. NLA Blast. Carib, the official regatta bear. Budget Marine. SIFH Group. Glenegg Natural Spring Water. The Regatta Water. McIntyre Brothers and Yamaha. Camper and Nicholson Marinas. Brighton and Miners with Campery and Smyrna Vodka, Ramdani's True Value and Harry Spain, Coca Cola Grenada, Flow, West Old White Jack, Rock Boat Regatta, 25th and 26th February, Grand Dance Beach, We Rum, We Regatta, Be There. Building or renovating your home or business? Why not use clean, renewable energy? Install solar panels to power your home and office and see your energy costs go down and your savings go up. Using renewable solar-powered energy protects our environment, reduces our carbon footprint, and slows the devastating impact of climate change. Republic Bank can help to finance construction and renovations that make use of renewable energy. Visit any Public Bank branch and ask about renewable energy financing options today. Rip, we're the one for you. We need a 
don't think what flow giving away. Thirty thousand dollars in cash and prizes. Unlimited talk. It's free WhatsApp and social media. Up to ninety percent off on smartphones. So you're getting more savings, more value, and more speed on the best telecommunication network on the island. And all you have to do, talk up as low as five dollars. Sign up for postpaid and our broadband. Switch up to our beautiful network. Pay your bills on time. Activate a combo plan and bundle your services to save more and win more. So visit us in stores today to be a part of our Move Fun Move promotion with Flo. It's more with Flo now, you really know. All these deals make you save more. Get more! Need a home, car, education, dream vacation? The National Lotteries Authority's Lotto Jackpot is... $314,000. Play today for chances at a more satisfying life. Lotto, play and win a lot of money. Somebody call Wagi because this is madness. Don't, don't, don't tell madness. Sunday, March 5th from 5 p.m. The National Stadium comes alive as Megaforce Promotion presents its first. Event for 2023 March Madness Mega Bingo, and you can win a whopping one hundred thousand dollars in cash. Wait, is a hundred thousand dollars just in it? Yes, one hundred k in cash could be yours. Tickets are sixty dollars for one or one hundred for two. You gotta be mad to miss that. Remember Sunday, Sunday March fifth, National Stadium. Get ready for March Madness Mega. What does it take to be an amazing woman? Lots of me time. Amazing women are classy, fancy, and a little sassy. It's the drink for me. Cheers. Sometimes you've got to show them who's boss. Alpha male? Nah, alpha females are more amazing. Cheers to secure in the bag. We make time for ourselves, for work, friends, and we certainly make time for passion. We're simply amazing. Amazing cream liqueur for the amazing woman in you. Ridgeway Residences, a modern, exclusive residential community offered by Ariza. Purchase one of our completely built houses or let us build for you by simply choosing your lot, choosing your home design from our selection, and let us do the rest. Owning a home does not have to be a frustrating process. For more information, contact Arisa Credit Union on 415-0994 or send us an email on Info at RidgewayResidences.gd Ridgeway Residences Hassle-free home ownership Grenada after 10 years Hey Grenada, this is Pastor Donnie McClurkin and get this, I am coming to the land of spice The multi-award winning Pastor Donnie McClurkin is back Live at the Grenada National Stadium for one night of praise and worship, where your hearts will be lifted heavenward. Joined by some of Grenada's finest gospel talent, Lexton Mitchell, Edson Mitchell, Ajabu, Spice Worship Ministry, McCurl Fletcher Newton, and Company, Touch of Grace, and the PBC Choir. Tickets are on sale now, $50, and can be found at all major ticket outlets and at your local churches. Don't miss this unique experience with classic songs like Stand, We Fall Down, Caribbean Medley, Great Is Your Mercy, and many more. Friday, 7th April, 2023, at 7 p.m. I got my mind made up and I won't turn back because I want to see my Jesus. This segment is brought to you by Republic Bank. Building or renovating your home or business? Why not use clean, renewable energy? Install solar panels to power your home and office and see your energy costs go down and your savings go up. Using renewable solar-powered energy protects our environment, reduces 
reduces our carbon footprint and slows the devastating impact of climate change. Republic Bank can help to finance construction and renovations that make use of renewable energy. Visit any Republic Bank branch and ask about renewable energy financing options today. Republic Bank, we're the one for you. Prabhaka Television Center finding alternative ways to use breadfruit. The first ever breadfruit festival was held on Friday. Christina John attended and has this report. It was all things breadfruit today on the Victoria Hard Court in St. Mark as the parish celebrated its first ever breadfruit festival. This staple food, which has become the main ingredient in our national dish, the oil down, was prepared in various forms and fashion. GBN engaged some of the vendors here on the hard court as they shared with us their various preparations. Sampling some breadfruit pie, breadfruit salad, and some shiitake. Went down very good. I had some breadfruit pudding a while ago. It was excellent. And also the punch. So I decided I'll do a breadfruit cake, and I also did some breadfruit um, tacos with some breadfruit salsa. I made some breadfruit scones, and I also have some breadfruit um, cupcakes. Well, it's shaped like the cupcake, but it's actually the shell, and I filled it with the salsa. Vendors share their views on today's festival. Festival like this, uh, just expand on, on, on the amount of things that you can make with the breadfruit, because because. Um, most people believe breadfruit is only for Isle Long, but breadfruit can make a lot of things, right? As you can see from the different stalls. I think it's a good initiative. As the people of St. Max, the parish come together. I think it's something good, very good, and I think we should continue and do a little bit more, a wide variety. I think so. Very delicious, very flavorable, spicy. It's very good and interesting. It brings in a revenue for the people, for, for me, because it brings in a revenue for me. The time of it is very good. I can do it in the month. We will not try to do it together with food fest, but we're going good. And we will continue twice a month. Organizer Peter Andrew says he chose to roast his breadfruit, thereby retaining all the nutrients this superfood has to offer. He cites great economic spin-offs for this in St. Mark, if marketed well. Because we want to give our vendors, because you have a lot of people who vend at food fairs and all those things. So we want to give them an opportunity to come and showcase that delicacy and run with the idea. They even could do it on their own, but we're not going to stop this initiative here. We're going to make it an annual thing or period Thing I should say. Nicole Charles and Clive Raymond, two other members of the organizing committee, both welcomed the initiative and looks forward to its continuation as an added feature to the already existing food fest in the parish. Sometimes, you know, when breadfruit is in season, we tend not to a lot fall, wastage and so forth. But besides the wastage, we thought as a national dish, we should find ways to utilize it, different ways, different dishes, whereby each person can prepare and help it to make to boost the breadfruit as one of our national fruits. We want to do it like every year, more to independence. It should be an annual event leading up to independence and especially where we're celebrating 50 years of independence. It should be something that should be looking for, every Guinean should be looking for every year. The whole idea of having a breadfruit festival was the brainchild of one Stan Philip. From the Victoria Hard Court in St. Mark's, where the first ever breadfruit festival was held, an initiative that they hope to continue in the future, I am Christina John for GBN News. All right, here's what we're talking about now. 17-year-old Brianna Primus was crowned a Karaku Carnival Queen 2023 on Thursday night. Brianna, uh, that's Rena Thomas spoke with the winner. With the Miss Karaku Carnival 2023 title in hand, Tam CC student Brianna Primus is preparing for her upcoming competitions, the Miss Aquaval pageant and the National Queen Show in August. The 17-year-old, who represented six roads, also walked away with the crown and trophies for the best talent and best interview. She says that before getting involved in the competition, she was very shy, but overcame her fear of public speaking. 
I feel honored to be, you know, Miss Cargo Carnival Queen 2023. Well, you know, well, at first I didn't have confidence in myself because I was as a shy person, I'm very quiet. And that's how most people know me to be. So I decided to go out there and give the best shot. Miss Primus was excited to tell us about her future aspirations. I'm presently in terms to see person my dreams in business. My future goal is to become an entrepreneur one day in crochet business. The first runner-up was Miss Keisha Kajo representing BBH, and the second runner-up was Miss Renaya Alexander representing Lester. Chairperson of the Carico Carnival Committee, Princess John, spoke of the event. I can tell you it was a, it was the largest of all Queen show I've seen over the years. It was a wonderful, wonderful show. The attendance people started coming to the venue from seven o'clock last night, and I can tell you that it was very well attended. Um, in the, in, the, in the beginning, it started very well. We had a little slow thing in the end because, you know, the rain came and then a little hiccup through the system and so But I can tell you that the show was a very wonderful and very well attended. I want to thank the patrons of Grenada Caribou people Martin, the diaspora all over who came out and supported the young ladies. Ms. John outlined the upcoming activities for the rest of the carnival season in Caribou. Tonight we have the um, Power Soccer Moon Finals and we have 11 artists coming up against the rainy moon. That's Mozo. On Saturday, we have the Super Glow, where we see um, Skinny Bantan in performance, Boise, Slatter, and um, a lot of more artists. Sunday, we have the finals of the Calypso and Groovy, and we have 10 artists coming up, sorry, nine artists coming up against the Rainy Moon, Petty Juve, and I can tell you, Rina Juve, this Juve will be the biggest in the whole world. I mean, Caraco and Grenada is known for the Juve, but I can tell you that Caraco Juve is going to be the largest. This is going to be the largest. And later on in the afternoon, we have the fancy mass parading of the bands of the street. Later on in the night from nine o'clock, we have the Monday night mass um, band. Tuesday, our unique Shakespeare will be on the streets of Hillsborough, Montreal, Brunswick, Sixth and then into Hillsborough. And then we can see the climaxing of the festival later on in the afternoon to close at 12. For GBN News, I am Rena Pet Thomas reporting. Republic Bank has pledged its annual support to 18 of Grenada's most distinguished community-based organizations. Here's what we can tell you. This week, representatives from these charities were presented with a cash donation to assist with their community projects. We can tell you, too, the handover happened at the Grenada Olympic Committee at Quarters at Montrouge. Acting General Manager of Operations at Republic Bank, Mavis McBurney, said their commitment to assisting the charitable organizations is as old as the bank itself, which will commemorate 44 years this October. The NGOs are involved in various areas needing support in the communities, including health care, education, and care for the elderly and the socially marginalized. The recipients were grateful for the gestures, especially given their financial challenges. The donations were made through Republic Bank's Power to Make a Difference program. This evening's eyesore submission is a vegetable that is highly nutritious, but it can be deadly as well. It's time to take a peek through the GBN eyesore lens. A good eye catches all. GBN eyesore is brought to you by Clear Vision. Life is beautiful if only you can see it. Clear Vision Eye Center helps you do just that. We provide expert service, classy eyewear, and cutting-edge technology, all with a quality customer experience. See better, feel better, and look better. Meet us today at clairvisiongrenada.com or call 444-0055, WhatsApp 409-0055, or follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Clear Vision Eye Center. Let's see life and the world with a Clear Vision. Citizen journalists submitted this photograph of a cassava grown and harvested in Lower Monk Craven, measuring 62 inches. Cassava or manioc is a versatile, nutty flavored, starchy root vegetable or tuber that's widely consumed in several parts of the world. It's also what tapioca starch is made from. You must cook it before eating it, as the raw form can be poisonous. 
cassava is a native to South America. It's a major source of calories and carbs for people in many countries. Nigeria, Thailand, and Indonesia are the top cassava producing countries in the world. It's grown in tropical regions around the world because of its ability to withstand difficult growing conditions. In fact, it's one of the most drought tolerant crops. They are both sweet and bitter varieties of cassava. It can be consumed whole, grated, or ground into flour to use in bread and crackers. Individuals with food allergies can benefit from using cassava root in cooking and baking because it's free of gluten, grains, and nuts. Continue sharing your remarkable findings in our GBN ISO. Send us your photos and videos on WhatsApp at 405-3052 or our other social media accounts. The Ministry of Agriculture targets the Tiamausha Community College as part of its Food Security Initiative. Next. And so it begins. A journey like none other. Every moment has the potential to be unforgettable. Bring home a piece of the tropical green forest with every emerald. Capture the sparkling light of flawless water in a diamond. Make the sunrise and sunsets last forever. With precious colored gemstones, the essence of happiness is in our most precious memories. So when it all comes to an end, bring home something that will last forever. Colombian Emeralds International. Bring home more than a memory. Affordable quality products delivered to you via superb service. We are superb distributors, wholesalers and authorized agents for trusted products you know and love. Like Rika Juices, Pure Heaven Products, Bibin Diapers, New Bright Laundry Detergent, Allegra Pasta and more. Contact Superb Distributors at 435-2948 for superb quality and service. laughed and had so much fun for the festive season. But now it's time. It's time for some serious detox business at Nirvana Detox Center and Natural Health Store. Start the year right with your health as a priority. Cleanse and flush your blood, liver, and kidneys with quality herbs and supplements. Purchase one of our detox combo packs starting from $100. Purchase a full body detox pack starting from $500. Get 10% off on colonic irrigation. Get a chance to win a free colonic irrigation treatment and product coupons with every purchase we are located in Grandons, minutes before the food fair shopping center immediately opposite the old capital bank building in the regency commercial suites give us a call at 231-6642 or 418-7115 or visit nirvana.gd for more info it's time for some serious detox business at nirvana detox center and natural health store we know real body care this offer is valid until march 31st 2023. Terms and conditions apply. Here is a little known fact. There is only one place in Grenada that you can get an MRI scan done. That place is Spicile Imaging Center. Yes, Grenada, that's the truth. Other centers could offer you other scans, but Spy Cell Imaging provides an authentic MRI scan. Here's another little known fact. Spy Cell Imaging has three centers. We operate at Grenville, the Carnage, and at the Ocean House Grand Dance. 
We provide the widest range of laboratory tests and services. CT scans, x-rays, mammograms, ultrasounds, and a host of other services. We are fully staffed by a team of family doctors and specialists. Call us today at 444-7679 or 4-0-1500 or visit any of our three locations. Spice and Imaging, from seeing the doctor to getting lab tests, scans, and pharmacy services. We are here to take care of you. WeatherGuard Pro. For every project, there's only one Pro. I want your folks to play these three games from the NLA. Daily pick three cash flow and play with. You will be supporting sports and culture, nation building, and our future. So go out and play. Folks, make it a must. You will see what the national lottery is doing for us. When you play big tree, cash flow and play with the NLA will support you all the way. Start in September 30th, Monday to Friday. These three games will be drawn mid-morning, 9.45 a.m., midday, 12.45 p.m., and evenings, 7.45 p.m. The National Lotteries, support in sports, culture, and nation building. Sunday money day. This is GBN. We've got the means, the power, and the medium. This segment is brought to you by Flu. Paying is faster and easier with Flow Fast Pay. Use your MasterCard or Visa and pay from anywhere. Log on to discoverflow.co slash fastpay and press consumer. Select your country and enter your account number. Enter the amount to be paid and an email address. Enter your credit card information. You'll receive a payment confirmation with the transaction details, along with a receipt to your email address. It's fast, safe, and easy. Flow, keeping you connected. Officials from the Ministry of Agriculture engaged the TAMCC students as part of their plan to implement government's food security initiative. Christina John is going to tell us about that. The Ministry of Agriculture has plans of placing the Maribel Farm School at the epicenter of its programs as it aims to boost local food production. This as the ministry strategizes ways to improve the life and livelihoods of sector-dependent farmers, while at the same time encouraging more young people to get involved in agriculture and agro-processing. A team from the Ministry of Agriculture, Lands, Fisheries and Cooperatives, which also includes Senator and Minister with Responsibility for Agriculture, Adrian Thomas, met with staff and workers of the institution earlier this week. Their visit was geared towards gaining an understanding of the initiatives of the school and its potential to improve education and empowerment. The team also sees the institution as a potential avenue to be used by government to improve the breeding stock of swine, promote poultry production, and improve agro-processing capabilities. The government has identified Suriname as a potential country for the sourcing of good genetic breeds, but is also looking at improving facilities at the Maribel Farm School to achieve just that. Samuel Andrew, head of the campus, described the visit as an important one that can improve Grenada's agriculture sector. What we have been looking at is to, to do the livestock as well as the, the crops and diversifying across both, both, both spectrums. So you would, when you go to the fields, you'll see that we, we are doing a lot of short crops, quick rotation, table crops, maybe four, five, six of them that the McDevenners frequently want, the households like, mm -hmm. that, that quick turnover increases the economic value in itself. Infrastructure needs, we have been upgrading. We have added new boiler units to increase 
Um, or sale of chicken to the uh, food line and the, the other institutions. Mm -hmm. We also sell for camp sellings and um, other vendors who come in. It's a very important visit and it's much welcome because we have the minister here today. Honorable John Thomas, and then we have the PS as well, Francois. So this this speaks well. I mean, I feel very good to know that um, they can take the time to engage us and to look at ways in which we can project the campus as a center of excellence. The Maribou Farm School is utilized by year two students of the TA Marshall Community College as a hands-on training site. The ministry said it remains committed to providing the necessary support for the institution, especially as it is preparing to roll out in the coming months the Food Security Enhancement Project to improve local production through the provision of good quality food and improve quantities. Christina John, GBN News. GFA executive member dismissed. The Sports News is next. Every stage of your life. For business. For your education. For your financial freedom. For that new ride. Upgrade your life with the communal. Contact us today. Sunday, February 26th, it's Savior's Day with the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. His subject, the War of Armageddon, has begun. The Great War has begun. And foreign wars and the plagues that are hitting America and the world is destroying the American economy. Sunday, February 26th, live in the Wintrust Arena. Doors open at noon. Get your tickets now at all Ticketmaster outlets. And get all the details at NOI.org. When you need your prescription filled or you require non-prescribed medication, supplements, or all your personal needs, visit Gittins Healthcare at locations on Wall Street Grand Dance, Victoria Street Grand Dance, and Central Deputy Street Wall. Gittins Healthcare aims to provide an exceptional personalized pharmacy experience. Additionally, children under 5 and adults 55 years and over will enjoy 10% discount on purchases of $20 and over on prescription medication. Stop selling for less. Visit Kittens Healthcare, where your health is our priority. Start the new year right with extra cash when you take your next Quartz Ready Cash loan. Get $100 Quartz Cash with your $5,000 loan and double the rewards with your next loan of $8,000 or over. Get your loan now and pay nothing down and get 30 days to make your first installment. Plus, hassle-free service, flexible payment terms, and 24-hour approval. All you need to apply is your ID, proof of address, payslip, references, and a job letter. Let's ring in the new year with some extra Extra cash from Quartz Ready Cash. Conditions apply. Quartz Ready Cash. We are ready when you are. A whole new level of convenience and comfort awaits you when you shop at Rise and Shine Supermarket and Hardware Supplies, Griffin Lane, Grenville. Convenient. Because we are open Sunday to Sunday. We're even at your service on public holidays. Comfort, because we are easily accessible to the physically challenged. Free Wi-Fi is available while you shop, and bags come at no charge. Everyday low prices and excellent customer care. Adequate parking available. We supply everything you can possibly think of. Family and home supplies, fresh meat, vegetables, and personal care products. All brands of cooking gas at affordable prices. You can send in your order, have it pulled, or pick up extra. 
Vehicle Pool and Pet Supplies, located opposite the bus terminal in Hillsboro, provides you with all your pool and pets needs. We offer the following products, dogs and puppy food, animal accessories such as toys, clippers, collars, cat litter, the warmer, animal vitamins, insecticide, plant food and all your pooling equipment from start to finish. We also offer the following services, cleaning and treating of pools weekly or fortnightly, pump repairs, pool estimations and repairs. We open from Monday to Friday 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. and on Saturdays 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. We can be contacted at 443-6575 or visit our Facebook page, Caracol Pool and Pet Supplies. I want your folks to play these three games from the NLA. Daily pick three cash flow and play with. You will be supporting sports and culture. Nation building and our future. So go out and play, folks. Make it a must. You will see what the National Lottery is doing for us. When you play pick three cash flow and play with. The NLA will support you all the way. Start in September 30th, Monday to Friday. These three games will be drawn mid-morning, 9.45 a.m., midday, 12.45 p.m., and evenings, 7.45 p.m. The National Lotteries, supporting sports, culture, and nation-building. Sunday Monday. fans, good evening. A member of the GFA executive has been provisionally dismissed. Parish director for St. Mark, Arco Mark, the final was relieved of his duties as a director following a confrontation during a football match played on January 28 involving Bye. FC Camahon and his club Sunsetters FC at Queen's Park. The executive cited Article 42 of uh, the GFA statutes, which states that the executive may provisionally dismiss a member of a body previously elected by the General Council. Tribune Sports spoke with Mr. Mark, who deemed the decision unlawful. According to him, the executive does not have the authority to take such action. He thinks the power is vested in the highest decision-making body of the association, which is the GFA Council. That body elected him 18 votes to three at the last elections of the General Council. He noted that the match officials are not in a position to decide whether disciplinary action should be taken against him. Mark, who is the coach of Sunsetters, has been referred to the disciplinary committee in keeping with competition rules and regulations. Mark was part of the resistance group that called for change in football administration in Grenada. The matter will be discussed at the next meeting of the General Council. GBN Sports sought clarity on the executive member's dismissal from the GFA and was informed by Communications Officer Ria Murray that the association is not commenting on the matter. Still talking football, the GFA wrapped up the C license coaching course at the GFA Secretariat on Thursday. The course will bring to a close the C license course, which uh, remained incomplete. Communications Officer of the GFA, Ria Murray, tells us more. Last year, we had a C license course that started, and we are heading towards the conclusion for the C license course. It was geared at Premier League coaches um, raising their, their, their level to a C license. So um, the course, as I I said it began last year and we are moving to, towards having it finished. So we'll have sessions from today until Saturday um, in the afternoon. So the participants we had last year, they will come to the sessions. Um, the facilitators from CONCACAF are here and they will finish the program and then they would be able to collect their 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 C license certification. We're happy for that scene. The process will be completed um, this time around. 
Captain Healy Matthews struck an unbeaten 63 to help West Indies beat Ireland with one ball to spare to keep their slim hopes of making the women's T20 World Cup semi-finals alive. Matthews hit the penultimate ball for four as West Indies chased down their target of 138 in a thrilling finish. Earlier, Ola Prendergas had hit 61 of 47 balls as Ireland posted 137 for nine. Ireland, who looked like favourites at the halfway stage, were eliminated with the defeat in Cape Town. We can tell you West Indies must beat Pakistan by a large margin in their last game on Sunday to improve their net run rate and need one of England or India to lose both of their remaining games to have any chance of qualifying in second place. That is the sports news for now. Chief Executive Officer of Guyana Water Incorporated, Dr. Richard Van West Charles, has teamed up with several businesses and launched West Africa's South America Alliance Incorporated. More details from HGP TV. A consortium of businesses has launched West Africa South America Alliance Incorporated, WASA, serving Guyana's oil and gas sector. The company was launched on Thursday on the sideline of the International Energy Conference, being held at the Marriott Hotel. Chairman of the company, Dr. Richard Van West Charles, who was the former chief executive officer of the Guyana Water Incorporated, said it comprises of businesses from West Africa and South America. The essence of the, the company is to bring the knowledge and the expertise of the West African region and come together with that of South America to make our operations in Guyana from the perspective of the areas identified more efficient. WASA provides a number of services including training and capacity building, personnel sourcing and procurement and warehouse servicing. While international companies hold shares, Van West Charles noted that Guyanese make up 51% of the business, keeping with the Local Content Act. Guyana is a young country in the area of oil and gas, and therefore it is important for as many Guyanese as possible to be equipped with the skills necessary. To One of the businesses in partnership, Yumi Balgon, reminded of the importance of human resources to the sector. When we talk about the people to be able to participate in the value chain of oil and gas, the most important thing is education. And the education in oil and gas is very specific in terms of requirement and certifications. So we are here to do that. With experience and knowledge focused on the oil and gas sector value chain, the company aims to position itself as the key solution provider through strategic partnerships. CIBC First Caribbean International Bank's 2022 Walk for the Cure has been hailed a resounding success. It raised some 65,000 EC dollars, an increase from the 42,000 EC dollars garnered in 2021. Now, the financial institution donated the proceeds from the event on Thursday to Breast Friends and the Oncology Department of Sir Lester Bird Medical Center. ABS News reports. The amount of patients that are coming in to the hospital and that are showing up with a diagnosis of breast cancer especially, amongst other cancers, is increasing and we've seen that trend over the years. Um, 
um, a lot of people would would say, you know, that's not a good thing. That's bad. We're getting more diagnoses of cancer. But I think more so, what has influenced this more than anything else is the amount of awareness that has be, have been spread to the population of Antigua and Barbuda. Further afield, Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau's use of an emergency measure to disperse anti-vaccine protesters who had blocked border crossings and occupied downtown Ottawa was justified, according to an independent panel. On Friday, the Public Order Emergency Commission submitted its report to Canada's Parliament on the government's decision to invoke the Emergencies Act in February 22 in response to the so-called Freedom Convoy Movement. Al Jazeera is more. The federal government has invoked the Emergencies Act to supplement provincial and territorial capacity to address the blockades and occupations. I want to be very clear. The scope of these measures will be time-limited, geographically targeted, as well as reasonable and proportionate to the threats they are meant to address. The Emergencies Act will be used to strengthen and support law enforcement agencies at all levels across the country. This is about keeping Canadians safe, protecting people's jobs, and restoring confidence in our institutions. We're entering the third week of illegal blockades that have been disrupting the lives of too many Canadians. Here in our capital city, families and small businesses have been enduring illegal obstruction of their neighborhoods. Occupying streets, harassing people, breaking the law, a peaceful protest. At the borders, in different parts of the country, the blockades are harming our economy and endangering public safety. Critical supply chains have been disrupted. This is hurting workers who rely on these jobs to feed their families. We invite you to stay with us. We'll remind you of the headlines after this. This is the Grenada Broadcasting Network, a reminder of the headlines. AFIS authorizes imports of fresh mango fruit from Grenada into the United States. The National Party calls on government to reconsider the plan to sever MNIB workers. 17-year-old Brianna Prime has crowned a Karakou Carnival Queen 2023. In Around the Globe, businesses partner to launch joint venture in Guyana. Internationally, Trudeau justified in using emergency powers. Plus in the sports news, GFA executive member dismissed. If you missed any part of this newscast, a repeat of it will be broadcast at 10 o'clock tonight. Continue to follow us online, gbn.gd, or on GBN Television Facebook page and YouTube channel for these and other top stories. I'm Ken Ribbetist, inviting you to tune into the Weekend Review on Sunday if you can. That's all from us in the newsroom. Have a great weekend. Good night.